And this time round, I didn't click the photograph, I went straight to video. So yes, back to my driving. So I realised then, I, driving anxiety was creeping in and it was getting more and more and it was at different times of the day. Um, and for probably a year and a half, driving hasn't been enjoyable. I have been, I mean, I've got, there's been times I've got to Bedford to my friend's house where I spend a lot of time and she'll come here. And I've literally thought about leaving my car there and getting a train home. That's how bad it got because I would turn up at a house and I was shaking by the time I got there. Yeah, there might've been a crash that I'd seen, but come on, don't we all see those? Or somebody might have cut me up to a point I thought, shit, I could have died. But it was an irrational kind of a, a fear, I, I, I guess, for me, for somebody that's normally so confident and in control of her vehicle, because I am, and I am a good driver. I don't care what anyone says, female or not female. Um, that's a debate, but anyway. So what's been a real pleasure is as much as the anxiety is up and down, up and down with my driving, I haven't let it beat me. I have pushed through it because that's the stubborn person that I am. No matter how hard it is, I've got in that car and I've taken myself places um, because if I didn't, there's that that isn't an option for me. I need that um, independence and freedom to be able to get in my car and go. So taking El Vance, I stayed in the first day not knowing how the, the the medication would affect me. And when I got into my car the next day, even driving just to my local town to go and do a few chores, I felt different. I felt back in control and totally aware of my space on the road, everybody else's space on the road. And it was so nice to just have that back. So now I wonder, because I was putting that driving anxiety down to my menopause and HRT and all the rest of it. And now I'm wondering if it was everything else creeping in, leading up to my diagnosis. I don't know, I, I'm just putting this out there because this is my story and, and my experience. So that's my driving. Um, thank goodness it's gone. My partner Rowan's here this weekend and we went out and drove quite a bit yesterday. And I can honest, and I drove back from Lou's at the weekend and I thoroughly enjoyed it again. And I'm so grateful for that because that is one thing in life I never wanted to lose. Um, I love driving. I do. You know, I've got, I've got a bit of a heavy foot at times, but hey, you know, adrenaline and all that. So anyway, that's my driving. Um, I was given sertraline, probably a story many of you have heard for... Um, I've been on and off antidepressants probably for 20 years, uh, but kind of self-medicated, knew when I was going down a black hole and that I needed to take them, so I'd ask the doctor. And it never really lasted not long, not like now. Um, I was put on sertraline low dose when Howie died, you know, because of course, depression and grief are the same thing, right? Hmm. Anyway, I'm not gonna deny it hasn't taken the edge off things. So, um, but there's been times when it hasn't worked or touched the sides. So I've ended up on quite a high dose of sertraline and I'm very aware, I, I have been aware for the last few months since I've been talking to my doctor about this diagnosis. And if I got it that I possibly don't need sertraline. So that's an avenue I'm looking into. And my psychiatrist has said that, um, a month on L Vance and then we can start to reduce my sertraline, which will be good because to be honest, the the buzz and the clarity I get from L Vance, I've never got from sertraline, even if sertraline has kept my emotions on an even keel most of the time. Um, it definitely hasn't done what L Vance has done in one week. So that's another thing I wanted to say. Um, so whilst this week I am clearing and cleaning, Rowan and I did a massive clear out of my kitchen cupboard yesterday and I am able at this point in my life to throw away things I never thought I could, even food in the bloody cupboards that my husband had left there because I couldn't bear the thought of them not being there because he'd put them there. Anyway, we're getting there. The house looks even worse at the moment because we've cleared the cupboards out and I know 
I have to put it back, but I'm in a good space to do that. So uh, the clearing, the cleaning is is getting done and I am listening to advice from all you guys and I'm doing it in small chunks rather than all at once because it's overwhelming and I will flip from bit to bit. I've got a lot to do, so it's definitely going to keep me busy and that's a really good thing. How So that's all good. Things are changing. Um, my head is clearer and I've got a lot more clarity. But I still buy shit online. How do you stop that? How do you still stop that need for dopamine? Because even though my dopamine levels are like that, is it just an addiction that I see some online? I've got two cats and it's like, oh, look at that brush. I need that. Brush. Oh, that bed. And it's it's normally late at night when I'm <laughs> probably tired and my dopamine level. I'm going, oh, my God, my cat would love that. Order, order, order. And I think at the moment they're very small things that I'm ordering, but I'm still on that. Oh yeah, I could order that, order that. I'd, I'd like to curb that somewhat, but I don't quite know how. So if there's any advice for that, let me know. Um, anybody else love the sound of rain for sleep or storm? So when I can't sleep, I do meditate and I do love a wind down talking meditation. It does work for me and putting on rain sounds just and i nearly bought that last night on tiktok there was this rain cloud actual i think it's a dehumidifier but it's like a little rain cloud that lights up but the water trickles down so you would have actual water and i was like i stopped myself no you do not need that in your life there's enough shit but i i would really like it anyway that's the kind of thing i'm on about you know, the things that you love, the algorithms are pointing you in that direction. And it's so easy to just click that button and order it unless you don't need it. But yeah. And I'm going to finish now because this is like the longest because I'm doing two parts and I've never done that. So I'm really sorry because it's probably not that interesting to everybody else. But I'm having a brain dump and it's first thing in the morning. If any of you have read Charlie Mackesy's The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse, I absolutely adore that. The program at Christmas was wow just stunning and he's an amazing guy that's done amazing well at christmas time one of my one of our group bought somebody else at the like secret santa thing this one it's called the panda the cat and the dreadful tenny teddy a parody and it's a bit of a piss take on the boy the mole the fox and the horse but if anybody wants a laugh and a quick read i suggest go and get it i'm not being paid to do this it's just something because I can't read a heavy book at the moment. It's very similar to that easy read of Charlie Mackis's, but it's extremely funny if you don't mind the odd swear words. So anyway, that's me today. Thank you for listening. And, you know, again, as always, thank you very much. And if anybody wants to know anything else, drop me a question. Happy to talk. And I hope everybody has a good day. Goodbye for now.